Edwin Gale is an emeritus professor at Bristol University and a diabetes specialist, and he's with me now. Hello to you. Hello. Now, we're talking today about whether type 2 diabetes is a category error. Now, can you explain that to me? Okay, well, it may sound a bit of a philosophical question, but uh, in this opinion piece, I have uh, pointed out that you can only answer a question if you can formulate the question in a way that makes an answer possible. Uh, and this brings us to what a category error is. A category error uh, comes when you ask a question in one sort of way, but the answer is actually in a different category altogether. Uh, the idea of a category mistake or category error was introduced by Gilbert Ryle, the philosopher. And he used the analogy of the visitor to the University of Oxford who spends all day walking around the streets and he looks at the lecture halls, he looks at the colleges and all the rest of it. And at the end of the day, he turns around and said, but where's the university? Uh, because of course he is looking for an answer in terms of bricks and mortar or geography, but the answer lies in a different category completely, which is organization. So what I'm basically arguing is that when we talk about this condition called type two diabetes, what we're actually saying, making is a category error. We're talking as if the answer can be made by exploring a city of Oxford, when in fact we're looking in entirely the wrong place. Now, why do you think we can't sort of categorize type 2 diabetes as a, a disease or condition then? It boils down to what is a disease. And without trying to go too far into this complex issue, um, an awful lot depends on a name. Uh, this has been pointed out by people all the way through from Plato to Conrad Asher, that if you give a name, you imply an entity. You imply that this thing actually exists. Now, in practice, when someone like myself talks about type 2 diabetes, I am saying a form of diabetes for which I can find no other cause. In other words, it's a diagnosis of exclusion. So when I'm talking about type 2 diabetes, and I think this is a very common view, what I say is, is not unique to myself at all, uh, it's a common view that type 2 diabetes is a rag bag. There are various conditions, there's various spectrums of diseases, severity of diseases, all wrapped into this one definition, uh, which is fair enough, except that people forget it. We then talk about type 2 diabetes as if it was an actual, well-defined, formulated disease, and the moment we start talking about it as a disease, we assume that this is a disease which has got a cause, which has got a mechanism for which there are specific treatments uh, and for which there may be prevention and cure. Now, in fact, if it's not just a specific disease, but a whole complex spectrum of disorders, uh, then that is leading us astray and we're making a category error. Now, if this is true, that there is this error, what do you think has been achieved in diabetes research so far, and what needs re-evaluation? If you look at the way in which medical students are taught and the way we do research, it is essentially reductionist. Okay, the, uh, this dates back to the 19th century, when the great breakthrough was to see the body as a machine. And we talk about it all the time. Subliminally, we talk about disease mechanisms, uh, we talk about errors of metabolism, and we have made right, collectively huge progress in understanding diseases where there is a mechanical fault, where, for example, there's a, a gene that's wrong, where there's an enzyme pathway that's gone astray, where there is a vitamin deficiency. All these diseases have definable causes, and we can define them as a disease based upon their cause. But in the recent years, what has emerged are the so-called multifactorial diseases, of which diabetes is an example, hypertension is an example, uh, cancer uh, is an example. The multifactorial diseases actually can't be defined in terms of their cause, because we don't have a mechanism. All we know is that a whole variety of body processes converge on a single endpoint, which might be a high blood pressure, it might be a high blood sugar, it might be obesity. And in fact, those things all go together. So to pull out diabetes and forget the obesity, the hypertension, and all the other associated conditions is actually to impoverish it. We're trying to pull out one disease out of what is a very complex spectrum. 
So what do you think are the implications regarding therapies uh, and treatments, and what are the implications for clinicians and researchers? I think, first of all, that if you talk as it, uh, of type 2 diabetes as being a single condition, you're going to then automatically, and without even thinking about it, assume that there is a single best treatment, uh, and there is a single best pathway to follow. Now, I think any clinician knows that the people coming in to a diabetic clinic are enormously heterogeneous. They're very varied. Some have a major problem which is actually being overweight. Some are thin, but they also have diabetes, but they might have high blood pressure. Um, what my concern is, is that by extracting out the type 2 component and trying to treat that in isolation, we're missing the main message. Uh, and in fact, guidelines that have come out uh, are mainly limited because they are one-size-fits-all guidelines. You have, quotes, type 2 diabetes, therefore this is the treatment that you need. But there's a difference. If you're 40 or if you're 90, it's a big difference. If you're in, let's say, South India or in Arizona, there's going to be a very big difference. To, to, to come up with the idea that one treatment is ideal for everyone uh, makes no sense. And of course, people are increasingly seeing that, and they're saying, well, we have to individualize guidelines. Now, if you individualize a guideline, you mean treating the patient in the way that individual patient should be treated, which is what doctors like me thought we were doing all along. So that's why I'm very skeptical about guidelines. They're useful as guidelines, but they can lead to over-treatment, particularly in people like the elderly who actually don't need such intensive treatment. And finally, you prefer a different name for type 2 diabetes. Well, I think that people um, get hypnotized by a name. If I spoke to any of my colleagues, they'd say, yes, of course, type 2 diabetes is a complex of many different disorders. Uh, and then, next moment, we're, we're sitting down together and I'm saying the treatment for type 2 diabetes should be. In other words, it's uh, an example of cognitive dissonance. We can hold contradictory and conflicting uh, pieces of information in our head at the same time. As I said earlier, uh, a name can be very deceptive. Uh, and therefore, it's best to have a name which makes no assumptions. Uh, so I have proposed that we should talk about idiopathic hyperglycemia. High blood glucose, we don't know why. That would be an honest description of it. And if we talked about that, it would remind us all the time that uh, we didn't really know what we were talking about. Well, Professor Gale, thank you very much. Thank you.